Hello, my name is Dwayne Dorch, and I'd like to welcome you back to another edition of our video series on edge workers. Our topic today is the edge worker code profiler, which is a great tool for helping to understand performance issues associated with your edge workers execution. But first, let's start with the refresher of the limits of edge workers related to CPU and memory. My colleague, AJ Johnson, created a blog post in January of 2023 with some updated limits. Let's take a look at that on the Akamai website. As we go down here to some graphic results, uh, note the decrease in resource-based errors on the day that the rollout of the new limits took place. You can see a drastic drop in uh, the error rate based on the increased limits. This is a 10x reduction compared to historical averages. Now let's dive into the world of performance profiling. From an edge worker's perspective, there are three limits that you want to keep in mind. They are CPU time, wall time, and memory utilization. My colleague Tim Barik created this illustration to help explain these limitations. Let's say we have an edge worker that does several actions, in this case A, B, and C. It then fires a request and waits for a response to come back. When the response comes back, it does two additional things, X and Y. There are two timeouts here that we need to be aware of. The first is the CPU time, which is the time when our edge worker is actually executing code and consuming CPU cycles. So it could be um, reading or modifying or validating a cookie or adding headers or doing some regex, whatever uh, in the JavaScript code that will execute CPU cycles. Next is waiting time. So once the request is sent, we wait for the response to come back. That could be a couple hundred milliseconds up to a couple seconds. Uh, and waiting time is not part of the CPU time. And then when the response comes back, we may, add, we may do some additional uh, edge worker actions that require CPU, um, some modification to the response. Again, more CPU time. And then we have wall time, which is the total time of the overall edge worker execution, including the CPU time and the waiting time. With these definitions in mind, let's review the updated limits uh, in the blog post that we just reviewed. For all of the on type event handlers, that would be on client request, on client response, on origin request, on origin response, those event handlers have increases in all four of the categories. Uh, CPU increase has gone from 10 to 20 milliseconds. Uh, wall time from four to 5.5 seconds. Memory from 1.5 megabytes to 2.5 megabytes. And the number of sub requests uh, have increased from one to four. Uh, this, is a, this is a really huge improvement uh, for edge worker capability. It opens up a whole nother world of possible use cases, being able to execute multiple sub requests uh, from a single event handler. Uh, likewise, for the response provider event, uh, the CPU has also doubled from 100 to 200 milliseconds, uh, wall time from 4 to 8 seconds, uh, memory from 1.5 to 4 megabytes, and the number of sub requests has, has remained uh, the same there at 50. So some really important uh, expansion in the resource limits for edge workers. Also note that we've implemented something called dynamic bursting. Uh, dynamic bursting provides some additional headroom for these limitations. So uh, if you do happen to go slightly over the reported limits, uh, you won't get an error. We'll be able to handle that uh, with this new dynamic bursting functionality. Well, let's get back to the code profiler. Uh, prior to this new profiler, our option for debugging was using advanced debug headers. Uh, there's another video in this series about uh, how to use advanced debug headers. But here we see an example of the output from using these advanced debug headers. Note the output of the wall time and CPU time, where we give the overall value, but don't break down exactly where in the edge worker the CPU and wall time is used. So under the code profiler, which tells you exactly where resources are used within your edge worker. The profiler provides CPU profiling. So it breaks down the CPU cycles per function in your edge worker code. 
And the profile was also recently updated to include memory profiling, which shows how much memory each part of your code consumes. There's great documentation on the Edge Worker Profiler in our tech docs. Uh, there's a section under developer tools called Code Profiler that'll give you a full detailed documentation of uh, how this tool works. A few things to note about the Code Profiler. The Profiler only works on the staging network. So you can't use it on the production network, uh, but only in staging. Uh, you won't get an error when you if you try to use it in production, you just won't get any output. Also, you need to have the advanced debug headers turned on in order for the profiler to work. Again, we've got another video on how to set up the advanced debug headers, uh, but just note that you have to have the advanced debug headers turned on uh, in order to uh, take advantage of the detail from the code profiler. And as mentioned, it profiles uh, CPU, memory, and wall time. Okay, let's look at the code profiler in action. There are three ways to use the profiler. You can use the CLI, uh, you can use an IDE, particularly Visual Studio Code, or the IntelliJ uh, IDE plugin, uh, and you can use Chrome. Uh, in this example, we'll focus on Visual Studio Code. Well, here's a, an Edge worker that I have running on my personal website, DwayneDorch.com. It does some simple personalization by displaying the city and country that you're visiting from. Looking at the Edge Worker code, you can see that I'm using the on client request event as well as the response provider event. Once you've installed the toolkit for Visual Studio Code, and there's a link to that in the description below as well as in the tech docs, you'll see a new tab in the Visual Studio Code panel called Akamai Edge Workers Code Profiler. Here it is here. And this is where we set up the use of the profiler. Here we can add the URL that we want to profile. Uh, we can select an event handler. In my case, I'll select the response provider event handler that I'm using in my edge worker. Uh, you'll also choose whether you want to do CPU or memory profiling. Here we'll do CPU. You have the option to force a cold start of the edge worker, uh, which runs the edge worker initialization code first. This is startup code that runs outside of the edge worker um, and uh, is part of the total wall time. So if you're trying to get additional insights into your wall time consumption, uh, forcing the cold start can be very helpful. You also have the option to add request headers. As mentioned, you will need to add the uh, advanced debug header. And again, there's another video link below uh, for how to set that up, but you will need to add the edge worker trace header uh, for the advanced debugging. So let's go ahead and run the CPU profiler on our response provider. Notice that you get all the functions that have been called. Uh, there's a column for total time as well as self time. And you can order by any of these by clicking on the column header. You can click on the flame icon in the top right corner to view edge worker execution details in a flame graph. Flame graphs illustrate the stack trace and the amount of time spent in each stack frame. So here we're showing all the functions that were called. Uh, the wider the box, the more time spent in that function. Uh, you can click on a box to zoom in or use your mouse controls to zoom in and out. Note the depth of the function calls. Again, we can zoom in and out, we can move around with our mouse. We can search for a particular uh, function. If we type in, say, transform in the filter box above, uh, you can search for where a particular function is executed. And if you hover over a function, note the aggregate time and self time. Aggregate time is the total time that that function spent, including all sub functions. And the self time is the time for just that function. Okay, I mentioned that you can also run the profiler in other ways. Uh, one of those ways is using Chrome DevTools. The profiler generates an output file that can be read by many tools, including Chrome. Uh, there are a few ways to generate this output file, uh, one of which is to use the VS Code interface that we've been using. You can also generate it through the CLI. Let's look at VS Code. Uh, the CLI method is fully documented in, in the tech docs as well with some good examples. 
So let's run the profiler again, but this time let's enter a file path and file name in the options. And when we execute the profiler generates an output file. Then if we go to Chrome, open up more tools, JavaScript profiler, uh, click on profile, we'll be able to load this file that the profiler has created for us. And you can see here in Chrome, provides a nice interface for viewing the profile results. Okay, well, let's summarize what we've talked about so far. First, the updated limits uh, that we've seen are great. We've seen a 10x reduction in number of errors uh, since implementing them. Also, we noted that the new dynamic bursting is enabled for everyone and provides some additional headroom so that if you do exceed those published limits, uh, you're less likely to get an error. The code profiler allows you to debug your edge worker and JavaScript code for CPU and memory. You can run that from the CLI, from Visual Studio Code, as we've seen in this example, as well as other tools that support standard uh, debug file types like Chrome. Stay tuned for news on upcoming enhancements to the code profiler. Thanks again for joining us today, and we'll see you again in a future video.